And you can see on the other end I've got a rubber band attached to these two that are doubled over. Tied off on this end. The rubber band helps keep the tension on it while you're working on the project. You don't want to have it loose while you're working on it because you'll get some bad spots in there. So keep it tied off with some rubber bands on one end to keep the tension on it. The other end will take care of itself. And we'll try and show you the finished product here in a few minutes. with the warp on a slant and I like the work going up that way it helps keep the needle in there tight against the warp also it just works seems to work better when you're working uphill it helps hold everything in place with the string the needles to hold it in place there to keep it separated and working uphill you've always got a little bit of tension pushing down on it so it helps keep everything in place so if you can work on a slant, it's not too hard to find a slant somewhere in somebody's house. That's one more tip that I can give you on that. Okay, here you have the completed neck piece. It's very flat, very uniform, and it's got a nice appearance to it. Now we have to work on the throat to attach to the whistle or the pipe, whichever you want to call it. And I'll show you how to put that together. Is take three pieces of uh, nylon cord, about five feet long, find your spot about in the middle, of those five pieces, those three pieces, go back a few inches, tie it off, make yourself a simple three strand plait running about 12 inches. And then we're going to take this, double it over, we'll tie it off about right here with a constrictor knot then I'll show you what to do from there. So let me go ahead and get that tied off and we'll finish this throat piece up. The loop with the three strand braid and you see the constrictor knot I've tied right here. You still see these other two places where I had it tied off when I made the braid. You're going to need to uh, pop those loose with a spike or you can cut them with a pair of scissors. I like to use a spike because it doesn't mess up the... I don't have the uh, opportunity to screw up the cord. I don't want to cut a piece of cord I don't need to. Kind of frayed this cord a little bit. That's okay. I'm gonna cut one side, one cord out on each side here in just a second, and you'll see why. But before you do that, go ahead and unravel it all the way back. This part. And before you go any further. Get yourself a little tube of super glue. Make sure you go behind the constrictor knot back here. Put a small amount there. And also on this side, a small amount here, right behind the constrictor knot. 
You don't want to put too much on there because it, it'll harden the nylon cord and make it brittle. It'll break off, so don't put too much. Now we'll wait for that to dry and then we'll start working on a four strand plait going back towards the neck piece. glue dried here. We've still got six, six strands. We're only going to need four for the four strand plait. So I'll cut out two. I like to take out the two that are the most in the middle. I'll go ahead and cut those out. Cut them down nice and short. Be careful not to cut any of the strands you don't want to cut because it can make a bad thing if you cut a strand you don't want. Alright, now we have the four strands. I'm going to make a four strand plait just like I did before on the other lanyard. And after we've got that done, we'll attach it to the uh, neck piece. And for this part right here, I'm going to end up putting a small Turk's head right here to cover up the joint. And, but we can deal with that later. Let's go ahead and get the four strand plait in there. And I'll come back and show you the other project that we're going to do in the process. Uh, loop and the four strand plait that we just finished. And now we're going to start putting this thing together. What you do is you take the four strand plait as long as you want it to, as long as you want it to be whatever you feel comfortable with. This is as long as I thought it would be. Just long enough to reach from where the neck piece joins in the V while it's hanging around your neck so that this can come up and reach into the pocket where you're gonna have the pipe stored. But what you do is you take the plait, sandwich it in between the two pieces of the neck piece. This was a seven strand sword mat I like to use an odd number because when you go to this portion, you take two strands from the plait, four strand plait, and run it through the middle of the sword matting. It's easy to find the center on the sword matting because it's an odd number. I take the center piece, just go over three from this side, three from this side, and just split it on the one in the middle. Thread it through there. One other tip I can give you is while you're threading it through there, after you get one piece threaded through, tie yourself a little stopper knot in there loosely so that while you're working it doesn't slip back through so that you have to thread it through again. It can get kind of tedious threading this thing through here. But you sandwich it in between the two parts of the neck piece. I've got a constrictor knot on here just to show you what it would look like. And you put that constrictor knot on and start tightening it down. It'll make this round all the way, probably about an inch, inch and a half if you want a long one. And it makes a nice round platform so that when we put the final Turk's head on over the top of this, it will uh, have a nice look to it. I'll go ahead and tighten this down. Also, I'm going to put another constrictor knot here and probably another constrictor knot right here. And then I'll show you how we secure the loose strand